Hi everyone, I thought I would record a short video on some of the materials uh, I generally use in my courses uh, and the reasons why I've chosen these particular products. Say some may seem logical to you, some are probably a little bit more obscure, but that's how I ended up with them. Uh, and I'm sure you'll end up with your own product range or materials that you will use for many, many different reasons. Um, you will find a materials list attached to this video uh, together with hyperlinks to make your life a little easier. So I hope you find this video useful and of course as usual as always please please send me your comments your feedback and if you have any questions. So let's get started. So I think we we start with the paper um, and I, I don't we can start with the best and the worst or or uh why rather than better or worse uh, so my absolute favorite to draw on are the arches and saunders waterford uh paper in loose uh, and these are beautiful cotton paper and i rarely use them because i only use them when i want to do something uh uh, really nice or a piece for a client or a commission so I, I tend to save them for the nicer pieces so that you can buy in loose sheet as uh, cotton paper and either arches or waterford they're both fantastic uh, and I tend to either go for uh, cold pressed or not I don't like hot press, it's a very smooth finish. I would probably use hot press if I'm going to do a uh, maybe a piece for printing and I don't want to see the texture of the paper. So hot press is super flat like this. There is no texture. Cold press is quite textured and not is somewhere in the middle. Um, then what I normally use uh, quite regularly when I do general commissions and, and most of my, as I said, commission work, uh, I use Saunders Waterford and I use High White. And the reason why I use High White is because I like the white of the paper. My technique is to leave quite a bit of white and uh, if I'm going to do an intense watercolor drawing, then I probably wouldn't go for high white. But because I want to leave a lot of white in the paper, I go for high, for high white. This is a cotton paper and uh, it comes as a block, which means you've got to take each page separately. It, uh, this is not a pad. Um, and the quality is amazing and the way that the paint sits on the paper the way it absorbs it's amazing you'll find that uh, cotton paper absorbs the paint much better than cellulose paper which we'll come to in a minute um, and it allows you to move paint around a lot better uh, but it's less forgiving because with cotton paper the pigment is sucked into the uh, paper and once it's in, it's in. Uh, then uh, I use uh, something like this. Uh, it's a Canson um, 12 sheets uh, uh, paper. And this particular one, by the way, I always try my best to use uh, 300 GSM. That to me is very important, the GSM. That is the thickness of the paper. You want thick paper. I don't like working on thin paper, I, uh, unless I'm just sketching and doodling, which we'll come to in a minute. Uh, I use Canson uh, for quick sketches to play around with ideas and see what the colors look like. Now, this is cellulose paper. With, uh, with cellulose paper, the water, the, the paint doesn't get absorbed in the paper as much as with cotton paper. 
which means that you can actually go away and, and lift, go back and lift some of the paint. Uh, but because it doesn't absorb the paint, uh, it doesn't have the same richness and depth where you, when you want to build lots of layers. So when you try to do big washes, it's, it's more difficult using uh, cellulose paper. So I just tend to use it for practice rather than complex watches and for uh, simple demonstrations. Uh, nothing too complicated, but it's fantastic to carry around with you and play around. Now, whilst I did say that it's very difficult to do good washes with it, you can actually achieve some pretty good results. It just needs a lot more practice. Uh, then I go for the Bockingford. So, so that's probably the, the lesser expensive paper that I use. Bockingford is what I tend to use quite often for my, and I use two types of Bockingford paper. I use this, which is the um, uh, uh, the uh, hot press. So that's quite flat. And I only use that because sometimes I like to remove the grain if I want to scan a drawing or uh, prepare it for print and I want to see what it looks like without the grain. So you can either have the cold press or you can have the knot. Again, I always try to go for as white as possible a paper. Uh, in my opinion, that is slightly better paper than the Canson. Uh, and it's a good one to draw pieces on. So you see, I, quite, I use that quite often in my, uh, in my demonstrations and tutorials. And you can get a really good range of uh, uh, depth in it as well. Uh, but you can, you probably can see once you've worked with this type of paper, you'll probably see a difference between that and cotton paper. My suggestion is if you're starting life in watercolor, by all means go for the cheaper paper because it does the job. When you want to improve and refine your technique, then go to the, uh, the uh, cotton paper. Uh, the the other thing that I do use uh, that I, that I uh, sorry pause that and and re-edit it please uh, Leila the other thing that I use all the time and that's a really bad habit but I that's why I said to you earlier some of my reasons are logical and some are not. So I obviously use uh, quite a lot of cartridge paper just to sketch things out. Uh, and you can see that I always have cartridge paper. But a bad habit is I sometimes apply watercolor to cartridge paper uh, and, and it really responds really badly. So I've got to be super careful and I only do it just to have fun and play around. But what I do use a lot is this sketch pad, which is a Derwent a sketch pad and the reason why I use it is because it's got uh, a lot of uh, pages I can't tell in here um, how many pages it has uh, actually I think there's somewhere something like 40 50 pages unlike normal watercolor this is not a watercolor book unlike normal watercolors uh, this comes with, it's a thick pad. Oh, by the way, that's the other thing is, you notice that I like carrying around with me a spiral pad rather than a block. And I like a spiral pad because when you open it, it opens fully. So I don't use, so I use spiral pads generally, yeah. Um, so this is A4. Uh, it is thinner paper, so it's 165 GSM. Uh, which is really not very good for watercolor. But this is what I use. I carry this around with me and I have actually learned to get good watercolor uh, results out of it. Now, th this is a, it's really difficult to work with this because uh, it's not watercolor paper, it doesn't absorb the paint. So you really gotta get used to how it behaves with uh, paper. But I love the fact that I have a really thick book of endless pages, quite white. So it's a very white uh, 
uh, pad, uh, which is what I like. So I like anything that's super wide. And I have a lot of pages here. And the fact that it took me a bit longer to learn how to use this pad, uh, it was frustrating. But now I'm actually quite comfortable with it and I can do some more difficult washes with this. So, and the other beauty about this paper is you can literally just cut a page every time you make a mistake and chuck it in the bin, which happens far too often. Uh, and the other thing that I do with this, with this book, which I like because it's not an expensive book. So in here, and I wish I can remember how many pages it has, uh, quite a lot, I think. Oh, 56, there it is, 56 pages. So with this, uh, uh, the beauty is because you get a lot of paper is I'm more than happy to just be wasteful and practice so I use the front I work from the front end to do nice drawings yeah uh, and I work from the back in to play around and mess around and you can see just from this and I'm gonna zoom in yeah we're getting pretty good watercolor results out of a non-watercolor paper. So it is possible. Um, and by all means, do try it. This book is about 13 pounds sterling. Uh, and the same, uh, the same in watercolor paper will be, God, uh, something like 80 or 100 pounds. So this is probably a fifth of the price, maybe less. Uh, the other thing that's annoying about this paper is it crinkles from the water, and you probably can't see, but you can see here, it's crinkled. Um, and that's okay by me. Uh, I don't do any commission work, or I don't do any pieces using this paper. It trips very easily. So that's another thing you've got to be uh, aware of. The better the paper, the less damage you can do when you apply a masking tape. Masking tape, it trips. So in here, I 100% make sure that I use a hairdryer when I remove the masking tape. Uh, so yeah, the advantages, you get a lot of pages. It's a nice big book to carry around with you. The disadvantages, it's not watercolor and it is a pain in the backside to work with, but you can learn it over a period of time. So these are all the various papers that I use. Next is the mystery of brushes. My God, what a difficult subject. So uh, as you probably know from my style of drawing, I'm not a purist um, and that works so much in my favor because uh, purest watercolors uh, are a lot more technical than me. I love sketching, drawing, and color, uh, but by, uh, I, I don't get attracted to purism in watercolor, maybe because of my architectural background. So my first uh, and simplest brushes are these, um, let me just put my glasses on. Uh, because I've forgotten even what they're called. They're pentals, right? They are pentals, yeah? And I have a large, a medium, and a very fine nib. So three of these. They are amazing if you're on a plane, if you're running around and you wanted to do something quick. So they are superb for on-the-go drawing, yeah? Or on-the-go adding color. Uh, they're much harder to control, of course, uh, sorry, they're very good and easier to work with for very simple drawings, and they're very hard to control if you want to do anything complex. Uh, because the amount of water that comes out because of the, uh, the nib, the material, they're all synthetic, uh, which is fine. I use synthetic all the time. So I, I use these for on the go, for on the move, and for simplicity when I don't want to carry uh, uh, this type of thing with me. At home, I very, very rarely use them. Uh, then we get to what I do use on a day-to-day -day basis. 
I use a pipette sometimes to drag water out of a jar into my palette. So that's useful. Um, my go-to brushes have changed. I used to rely very heavily on Zaitan and I used uh, number eight and number four all the time. By the way, most of, if not all of my brushes are synthetic, yeah? Uh, they're good enough for me, I understand them and that's what, uh, because I'm self-taught, I obviously started from the very beginning with very cheap product and I just learned how to use what I use. Uh, so because I'm not classically trained, therefore I ended up with, you know, simpler paper and possibly simpler uh, brushes. So you, my go-to brush used to be uh, my Zytang 8 and 4. And uh, I've now been relying a lot uh, additionally to them. So I haven't really dropped them, but additionally to them, I. I use a lot of uh, these two brushes, which are the Pro Art, uh, and uh, they are the 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 ones that I use are the Pro Art Zero and the Pro Art. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Pro Art Four. Uh, so these are the two uh, brushes that I use quite a lot alongside the. Uh, Zaitang. The Zaitang holds a lot of water. I can do slightly bigger washes with them uh, and these I find that they are much better for control. I want to do straight lines. I want to do finer details. That's what I do. If I want to do slightly bulkier drawings then that's what I do. So with these three brushes I can do most of my work. Yeah, uh, This is very useful. Uh, it's just been, and by the way, uh, the other reason why I, so, I use some brushes is because I get pres. I, I'm, I hate waste, and if I get a present, I feel I have to use it. So I never really go out and buy anything. If I get a present, I use it, and I learn how to use it, and that's how it ends up being. So I use a short flat Aquafine, uh, uh, Daler, and Roni, and that's very useful for doing sky and bigger areas and, and uh, of, of mainly sky or a big area of grass. Uh, you'll see that in my palette, I've got a super big brush, which is an, uh, an Escoda brush. Now that brush is fantastic for big washes and I use it a lot if I'm doing a big wash. It's a little bit frustrating because somehow I don't know how to, it's meant to be a travel watch, uh, watch, a travel brush, but I can't seem to get it back in without damaging uh, the brush. And that is natural material. Uh, and therefore, I don't want to just press it hard. So that ended up no longer being a travel brush and uh, it stays here. I find, uh, and I get, I, again, that's been a, uh, that's been given to me as a, as a present. Um, and that's a pan art, a pan art, uh, it's called a, a script liner number one. And that is sometimes really useful for very fine, uh, long lines. And I have all sorts of other brushes in here that I never, I don't use. But they're here i don't want to throw them away uh, so the magic of brushes the most important thing for you to look uh, look into a brush is and i'm sorry jumping around a bit is these uh zaitang brushes they're amazing because also they have a very fine nib when they're wet so is this so are these two yeah and that is really important for my work because i use a lot of fine work and detailed work so zaitang and the pro art are great for fine work uh, and that's why I've stuck by them. Uh, the importance of uh, these synthetic brushes, and I'm not saying that the natural ones don't, but what you need to look for is the snap. When you're drawing, if you press, do they return back to their shape very quickly or not? And these do that really well. Uh, I'm not a fan of brushes that don't have a a fine nib at the end so I just tend to stay clear of them yeah 
so these are my brushes. Uh, some of the other uh, bits and pieces that I highly recommend for you is um, you need a, a really good ruler. So I use a normal ruler for normal work, uh, but I also use um, a specific uh, ruler for uh, when I do slightly smaller drawings. Uh, this this particular ruler, I'm going to put it on a, a slightly lighter background, I think, so you can see. Uh, this particular ruler I really like, uh, and it's, um, I don't know, it's called a deli or something, but it doesn't really matter what it's called. I really like this ruler because not only you have, of course, your straight edges, but you've got a number of parallel lines here, which means you're able to draw a line and see whether it's parallel to an another line. So if you can find a local ruler, the, uh, a ruler locally with parallel lines, then I really encourage you to do so. Um, obviously rubber, I use a stapler. You can use any type of rubber you like. Um, pencil, automatic pencil. I don't really, it's a pen tool. I use 0.5 millimeters. It's an HB, so it's not too hard, it's not too soft. Any automatic pencil will do. Uh, so therefore, just buy something cheap and cheerful off the shelf. Uh, as long as you've got the right nib in it and it's not too soft, not too hard, then great. Um, this particular uh, rubber mono eraser, that's amazing. I love this rubber because look at how fine is the uh, rubber which means you can remove very, very small, you can do lots of little uh, little bits where you can erase tiny bits, as opposed to this, where you rub something out, you rub half of the drawing. So that is a very handy rubber to have. Make sure you have lots of uh, kitchen paper, kitchen towels, these are serviettes from a local restaurant, they're quite nice and thick. Uh, when they get too much color, then I throw them away and so on. So you, you will need these for sure. Uh, I use a, a masking tape and it really is unbranded, so I can't really help you there. But what you need to do is you need to find, my, and, and I don't buy them online, I buy them from a local shop. Uh, I use two widths, that and a slightly wider one. But what I normally go for and ask for is ones that are not too, uh, the adhesive is not too strong. Uh, but even with these, when I put them on uh, paper, I have to use a hairdryer, any hairdryer will do, uh, to remove them. So masking tape, I can't give you an absolute recommendation. I buy them from a local shop, but I, you know, just play around with a few, but don't get something that's so sticky when you t when you use it, it rips the paper. Masking fluid, what does it do? If you apply masking fluid, let it set, let it dry. When you come to, uh, to paint, then that masking fluid will protect the paper and you can't see the paint behind it. Uh, and it's really useful if you want to do a wash and you want to preserve a few areas of paper where you're going to add another detail later. I've messed around with so many different types and I've settled on this mass pen uh, nylon nib and the reason why I settled on this one is because of this. When you remove this you'll see that there is a very small nozzle which means you can apply very thin lines with it and just as importantly the, the tip the cap, sorry, the cap has a, a metal part which protects the end, which means you don't end up with a clogged nozzle. So these are very handy. A lot of people don't like using masking fluid. I don't use it a lot, but if I use masking fluid, then that's what I will use. Uh, I find that very, very good to work with. The only other thing is, the only other couple of bits of accessory that I use are uh, a very, uh, ordinary uh, eraser uh, called uh, 
a, a, a kneadable eraser. And a kneadable eraser is great for lifting off uh, 50, 60, 70% of the, the uh, graphite of the page, but not lifting. So you can do your drawing in pencil, and then you can lift the majority of it so that the pencil doesn't come through when you add watercolor. I don't use the huge amount because most of my work, I do pencil, then pen and ink, and I erase the pencil completely. But if you don't use pen and ink, then that's very useful. A little spray, can't remember where I got it. It has no brand on it, just to wet my uh, palette. And that's very useful. And then of course, pens, pens, pens. Uh, I have changed, if, if you followed my, uh, my classes, you'll find that I used to use um, uh, a, a particular pen, and then I moved away from it. Uh, so I used to use a fountain pen, and I, uh, the problem I had is, I had a lot of problems finding the right ink to, uh, to, um, uh, to make sure that it's uh, waterproof because most inks are not waterproof and you use a fountain pen and everything smudges. So I had to find a pen, which I use a Lamy pen, and I used extra fine nib because all of my work is so fine. So I used extra fine nib when I found a uh, platinum carbon, which is a uh, waterproof ink that works with the Lamy pen. So that's okay if you don't want very, very fine work because even the extra fine nib on a Lamy is not fine enough. So because I need to be super, super fine, uh, I ended up with uh, two things, the range of micron, microns, and also I used a beautiful, beautiful pen from Tom Studio. Uh, so the microns, are amazing. I use four different types. Uh, let me just put my glasses on so I don't get them wrong. Uh, I use the, um, I think this is called light cool gray. And I use that pretty much like I use a pencil. Uh, very, very light. Then I use the cool gray in 005. And this is 005 as well. So 005 is the size of the nib and it's not the size it's actually the product range and i think the nib is like 0.05 of a millimeter or something i can't remember uh, i think if i look here it'll tell me 005 yeah that's 0.2 of a millimeter so i use 0.2 of a millimeter in the light cool gray and the cool gray and in the black i use again a 005 yeah and that is again 0.2 in the black, yeah. And I use a 003 in the black, which, if you excuse me for one second, uh, I've got a 003 in the black, and that is 0.15 of a millimeter. I love this pen. 003 black, 0.15 of a millimeter. It is so fine, you can't get any finer. So I love that pen, that I use a lot. And I use Tom Studio. Now this is a bit of a magical pen, it's amazing. Uh, you have two nibs, one there, and one there, yeah. Each one of these nibs has a cartridge that you dunk in ink and you can use watercolor, waterproof ink or none, it's up to you. And you literally, are, and, and they're very, very cheap to replace. The pen is dear, of course, but the nibs are super cheap to replace. So they're amazing for, you know, using it a lot. And uh, these are more expensive. So if you want to practice a lot, then these are, in the long run, they work out cheaper, although the pen is so much more expensive. Uh, beautiful to hold, beautiful cap, uh, but the only issue I have is they don't go down 
to 0.15 of a millimeter. I think they're about 0 0.25, 0 0.3 of a millimeter, so it's about twice the thickness of this. So I tend to use that less when I do fine work. Now, um, watercolors. Um, I'm just gonna tidy this up a tiny bit. Uh, watercolors, I sort of have ended up uh, for no other reason apart from my local shop stocks them and I see them on Instagram and I ended up following them and therefore I use a lot um, Daniel Smith. My palette is something I found in Barcelona. I was walking around and I thought, hey, this looks nice. No brand, nothing. I just found a palette with enough uh, uh, troughs for the range of paint that I use. Most of my palette is uh, Daniel Smith. However, there are a few odd bits in there which are on the materials list. But if I can run you through the critical uh, colors that I use, I use the sap green and the deep sap green all the time with the lemon yellow. Lemon yellow, sap green, deep sap green, all my foliage follow the same. Uh, and also I use a gouache in lemon yellow and in sap green. So gouache in yem, lemon yellow and sap green and uh, watercolor in ye lemon yellow, sap green and deep sap green. You can see that's hardly gets touched. Uh, I use a lot of the white gouache and that I think is a schminke. Uh, and that's amazing. That is uh, it's titanium white. It's the strongest gouache. It's the most opaque gouache. And I use gouache because it's opaque, which means you can put a lighter color on top of a darker color. You can't do that with watercolor because watercolor is very transparent. So white gouache, yellow gouache, and green gouache is all I have in my palette. Um, and you can see this area is designated for my plants. Uh, in here, I've got a neutral tint. I've got a, uh, a Payne's gray, and I've got a black, a purple, burnt sienna, uh, raw sienna, cobalt blue. Sorry, I, I use the neutral tint for shadows. Sometimes uh, Payne's gray for shadows as well. Black, I don't use a lot. Purple is quite nice for shadows as well. Um, I rarely use these colors and I use the burnt sienna and the raw sienna for creating warmth. I use a lot of cobalt blue, that's for the sky. And sometimes it's good fun to use the blue and the yellow to create the green. And then I have two or three different types of blues. As you can see, some of them are rarely touched. Um, oh, and there, sorry, I missed that. That's a cadmium yellow. So if I want slightly warmer yellow, I go for cadmium yellow rather than lemon yellow. And I use that quite a bit, which is the cadmium red. And the rest I use now and again, you can see they're not as used. Uh, so this is really my palette. I, I did this two, three years ago when I was first trying to get my head around of what I want to use. If I now get another palette, I'll probably end up with half of these colors and I still will still do the same work. Uh, so I think I've now covered the most important part of what I do uh, and it's given you a fairly good idea on why I, as I said, some of the reasons are illogical. Why am I using Daniel Smith? I don't know. I, local shop has them. I see them on Instagram, bang. Uh, and once you start using something and you get used to it and you learn it and you know how it behaves, you generally end up uh, uh, sticking to it. Uh, so this is why I use these products. I hope it's been informative by all means ask me questions i can't promise you a sensible answer but i can promise you an answer for sure uh, so please let me know and hope you found that useful